What's up, everybody? This is Talking All That Kaz, and I am DJ Casio. I want to thank you for checking out this particular episode of Talking All That Kaz. On this particular episode, I got another great interview that I conducted here on my radio show at 90.9 FM KCC in Salinas, California. But before we get going with that, I want you to go to this address, djcasio.com, and connect with me on social media, whether it's on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, or even if you go and subscribe to my Mixcloud channel, you can hear all my radio shows that I do in their entirety, music, commentary, and interviews. But this right here, talking all that Kaz, this is for just the interviews, okay? I want to thank everybody who checked out the first round of interviews that I put up. Now we're on to the second round. This particular round, I'm going to focus on 2019. But I'm going to sprinkle it in with some more current stuff, too. So you never know what you're going to get. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy another edition of Talking All That Kaz with me, DJ Casio. That's right, man. Back in the place right here, a couple minutes past 7 o'clock, it's 90.9 FM, KCC, Radio Bilingue, Monterey and Santa Cruz Counties, 104.1 FM, if you're in San Benito County, and of course, streaming live at djcasio.com, yours truly, Casio. And V-Dog up in here. And of course, as I said earlier, joined by a very special guest, my man goes by the name of Soul Rack. What's up, brother? What's good? What's good? Good to be back with my people here. You know that, what I'm saying? That's that's right, man. That's right. Yeah. Soul Soul Rack making making noise on the scene for a few years now. I've been seeing your name around for a minute now. Talk yeah. to me, talk to me about the uh, what's the origin story, as they say. Well, you know, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. You know, much love to you. We've been doing DJ Yo and um, B Dog and all the rest of the people, oh, and much love to Cali. You know, what I'm saying it's good to be. In the place where it is, you know what I'm saying, been happening for a while in hip hop. So thank you for that. But yeah. as far as uh, Soul Rack story goes, you know, I'm going to give you the edited version. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but basically, you know, born and raised in Orlando, Florida, you know what I'm saying, came, came and fought in love with hip hop from the youth. And from there, just been captivated with the whole movement and the genre <laughs> and just wanted to be a part of it and start writing my lyrics and, and just started moving forward as far as producing, well, making tracks to touch the people. But I've been doing it for, I got back in the game about two two or three years ago, but I've been doing it, I've been in love with hip-hop from since I was like 14 years old, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been in, part of my spirit, but now I'm finally able to do what I dreamed about. The, the dream is come, becoming real. I, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a dream to like be on my show. I, yeah. I appreciate that, man. I'm glad I could make that real for you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when when you say you got, when you say you got back in the game, uh, with, with you, uh, with, there was a hiatus. What was the deal? Yeah, it was because you know I wanted to live a lot. Basically, um, had, you know, had kids and things of nature, but I was behind the scenes because I was promoting shows, doing comedy, um, not performing comedy, but I mean, uh, being a promoter of comedy shows. And I was behind the scenes, started my record label, working with a few artists as far as just like development is concerned. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that, you know, I, I feel I, I felt I had a need to say something and my voice was still valid. And I felt there was a need for me to get out there again. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and do this thing and let me go ahead and make it happen because it's time. You know, it's time for people to hear Soul Rack. And so here we are. No question, man. Now, I, I see, you know, just seeing some of the stuff you put up on social media, uh, yeah. very, very, uh, very topical, very... Um, you know, in the now, what are, what are like, you know, some of the big topics that, that you're, uh, they, that has your attention right now? Well, a whole lot of, I mean, one of the things that I'm, you know, I'm concerned about is the legacy of hip hop. You know, I feel like we're in a fight right now for the life of hip hop. It's, um, so many different styles of music that's coming out. That's not, in my opinion, fully represented the culture. So mm -hmm. I'm feeling the need to kind of do like a kind of go back in time and kind of just, um, bring it back or just challenge the music that's out there so that way we fully represent the culture. Uh, one of the other things I'm dealing with, you know, from a social perspective is dealing with the issue of mass incarceration uh, because it's affecting a lot of black and brown people and we need to go ahead and confront it. And that way we can be able to see, that way families that have been decimated can somehow be repaired because so many of us have been affected by it. I'm one of the ones who work and I'm sure there are many other like me, so that's the reason why I did the song Belly the Beast, which you know, I'm sure people get a chance to hear later, but that's one of the things I'm dealing with as well. 
uh, that's on my heart and mind. Yeah, we're definitely going to jump into Belly of the Beast as soon as we get done talking to you. Um, Absolutely. You know, I, I, you know, to pivot just a little bit, how far is Surfside, Florida from Orlando? Ooh, Surfside, it's, it's a minute, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely a minute. Is that an area you you go to a lot? Or? Well, no, that that's where the uh, the building collapse happened and those, those people died. Yeah, yeah, that was that's closer mm-hmm. to, like, the Miami area, so at least, at least about three or four hours away, and that's oh, okay. a tragedy within itself because, you know, um, you know, no life, no life should be lost, but it, especially when it's preventable. And yeah. so, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm praying for the family members, and I'm hoping that through this, there's a lesson to be learned. But at the end of the day, we got to pray for those family members and hope that some lives can be savage. Um, it's definitely one of those heartbreaking things uh, that's happening right now in the state of Florida. So the the other uh, you mentioned, you know, talking about uh, dealing with uh, the incarceration issue and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What are what are your thoughts on uh, Bill Cosby getting out today? Oh man! Oh, that's a tight one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think at the end of the day, if he did it, he should be incarcerated because a crime is a crime. Um, but you know, there's a lot of speculation about it. I want to get more into dive a little more into the topic. But I think, you know, if I was able to get my opinion without knowing all of the new information that's really surrounding it, if he did wrong, he should, you know, should be incarcerated. I don't think no woman should be penalized. But if he didn't, then he should be he should be free. I mean, if, in this case, we find out that there were some things that were not done properly, and that's why he got released. Maybe been on the technicality or what so have you. But, again, I, one thing I do stand on, if people were, you know, in which we have evidence of that, molested and lives were damaged as a result of them having contact with him. Right. I'm for I'm for somebody being incarcerated for doing the wrong thing, you know what I'm saying? If it's for the wrong thing, my subject matter is dealing with people that's incarcerated where it's not equally balanced, where people are spending time for having a little bit of weed versus someone who committed a crime right. and they only get a little bit of time and somebody sold some maybe a couple of grams of weed, they're doing twenty years like someone that killed somebody. So we got to have balance in that area, but I'm not against someone getting incarcerated, but let's incarcerate people for the right reason. You I know, saw that post you put. I saw yeah. that post you put. I know exactly yeah. what you're referring to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, the thing about that is, like, I see people online now, they're, like, automatically are saying, see, he's innocent. He's not. Oh, yeah. He's not innocent. No, there was no innocence proven. It was just mm-hmm. that procedures weren't followed correctly. That's why he got out. Exactly. I mean, exactly. you know, he's he's still more likely than not guilty of the crime. Exactly. So. I think what happens a lot of times, and we have to be careful with this, especially when we're very active in political political things, and we're very active in pushing the agenda. Is we sometimes we're overlooked what certain people do. Because we always want to say that the law is wrong or there's an issue with this and that. And so we'll always side with that person even when they're wrong. If somebody's wrong, they're wrong. I don't care black, white, green, or purple. Right. If you did something wrong, you need to serve the time. You know what I'm saying? My issue is when it's unjustly done and when people who are being incarcerated shouldn't be incarcerated or if they are being incarcerated, let's make sure it's equal across the system. That way families are not decimated for people who – got pulled over because they had some air fresh in the car and the cop wanted to do something to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Those are the things that we need to look at and we need to stop. Yeah, yeah no no doubt, man. No doubt. So yeah. my my, uh, my boy V-Dog here, I, I don't know, he's been uh, doing uh, some cool. research on you. So you, okay. you, you going to jump so, in here? and? Well, um, I understand you're doing some work with Craig G. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. So, so how did mm-hmm. that how did that come about? Well, it came about through the producer that I worked with on this particular project, Big Bob. And what he did, he um, created an opportunity where he we was working on a song. And he was like, well, hey, I got Craig G's available. I say, okay, let's get him. Mm-hmm. And then also VBS Verbal, who's on the track of Belly the Beast. And we just got together and made it happen. So it was just that that easy, to be honest with you. There's not okay. more, more to add to it. Uh, but Craig G and I right now, we're in the talks of doing another song together. So, nice. Um, yeah, be ready. We got something else going to be coming down the pipe later on. Okay, and, and I just got one more question with that, because I noticed these things happen, uh, they've apparently been happening for a long time, and I just kind of learned this more so, well, I kind of knew, but I, sure. I hear it happens more often than not. So what I'm getting at is, mm-hmm. do you guys actually go, did you guys actually go in the studio together to record, or did it was like you had to, re- you recorded your vocals and then he recorded his? Because I, I know that happens sometimes sure. for whatever you know, sometimes travel reasons, I would think. or Sure. Right. So I was just curious yeah. on that. 
Yeah, we had to do it. We had to do it, you know, um, basically we had to do it in separate studios because we, um, he lives in New York, I live in Florida, so of course yeah, we, travel, that's true, yeah. it's one, <laughs> one thing. And then you got COVID was pretty much oh, yeah. rampant around that time that we were recording the track, and so we didn't have that ability to do that. But now that things are opening up, we're more in, in the position where we can record and we can be in the same booth together, which that's preferable to me because I'm old school, so I prefer to do that. Right. But sometimes you have to use ingenuity to get things done or you're going to get nothing done. So we just made it work the way we could, and it still came out successfully, you know, based on my taste. Yeah. Uh, because due to the fact that we didn't have that opportunity to record together. Right. No, and, and I'm not yeah. knocking either way because what, what oh, gets done, yeah, yeah. Well, what gets done yeah. gets done, you know. But I feel Absolutely. I do, I will say, though, like when, when it's like two people actually in the studio, you can like build more chemistry off it, you know, and, and, yeah. as you know. I mean. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, every person I work with, whether it's a producer, uh, engineer, whomever, I'd rather work with them face to face because I feel like chemistry is important when you're mm-hmm. recording music yes. and it's important when you want to reach a certain level and when everybody's together, I feel like it'd be more effective as far as creating that gym. But you know, with the COVID crisis being apparent and so many other different mm-hmm. things, you have to make the most of the opportunities that's afforded to Absolutely. you. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm definitely looking forward to um, record with him um, and some other people that I'm working with in the future face to face and hopefully everything works out. You know, the hip hop gods grant us that opportunity. We can make it happen. There you go. There it is, man. Yeah. So before we uh, before we let you get out of here and we uh, jump mm-hmm. in the belly of the beast, uh, yeah. what do, what does the rest of twenty twenty one look for for look look like for you? Well, it's looking pretty good. I mean, you know, one thing I mentioned, um, uh, Craig G and I, we get ready to do another track soon. Um, Master Ace and I got a track that's being that's nice. pretty much in the mixing and mastering mode. Um, I'm looking to work with some other people. I know, you know, um, even Speech and I talked about possibly doing some in twenty twenty two. So definitely some things that are down the pipe. I'm working on a collaboration with a producer from France, uh, from the UK, working with a producer for an EP um, in, from Canada and a producer in Morocco. So I got about three or four different EPs that's getting done as we speak, and hopefully we can drop some of that in 2022. And as the year progresses, we'll just keep making music until we get, until we keep as we move up the ladder. You know what I'm saying? And that's the goal for Soul Rack. That's what's there up right is. there, man. So how, how can yeah. people how can people catch up with you on social media? Oh yeah, basically it's it's real simple. Uh, just go at Soul Rack, which is S O U L R A C music, and they can find me on any social media platform. And if they want to buy the music, they just look for me. Um, just look for Soul Rack music, and they'll find me. I'll just look for Soul Rack. They'll find me on any um, any streaming platform or any music platform. Even you can even download my or make a video on TikTok. My music there as well. Wow, oh, nice! He's yeah. co- he's covering it all, man. Yeah, that's good interactive. Got you got to. <laughs> you have to, man. You have to, man. That's the move. Yeah. And I really, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us uh, a few minutes tonight. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna jump into your latest right here with uh, Craig G and VVS Verbal. So it's called mm-hmm. Belly of the Beast. And um, look forward to talking to you again real soon. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And thank you again for the invite. And, you know, one love thank to you. all the people. And, you know, I will, and I encourage your, your fan base to keep supporting you because you guys are doing some major things for the culture. Thank you, know you sir. Thank you. We appreciate all right. that. All right, man. All right. We'll talk to you soon, man. Peace. All right. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.